Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, How SAP and Docker Work Together to Increase Productivity. My name is Nicole Schmeider. I'm the Senior Marketing Specialist here at Docker, and I'll be moderating the polls and Q&A at the end of the session. So let me introduce to you today's speakers. The um, webinar today will be presented by Matt Taggart, Regional Sales Director here at Docker. He has eight years of experience equipping companies with document management solutions. And we also have um, Bob Mueller and Mike Will. There are SAP integration experts from James Imaging Systems, and they also have eight years of experience integrating SAP with Docker. So it's great to have these specialists on the line today sharing their insights and giving us some cool introductory demos. So let's take a look at today's agenda. So for the first third, Matt will introduce you, you know, what is a document management platform and why integrate it with Docuer? And then he'll do an introductory demo. And then we'll pass it off to Bob and Mike, who will dive into the SAP and Docker integration. And you'll learn about that and see a live demo as well. And at the end, we will open it up for Q&A and get to your questions and comments. All right, so before I hand it over to Matt, we do have one poll question for you. So uh, take a look at your screen now. I'm actually going to launch it. So here we go. Should see it on your screen now. What are your current pain points with SAP or your existing ERP system? You can check one or more of the um, options as you can see on the screen. So is it costly document storage? Can't store external documents in SAP or your ERP? Too much manual data entry? People who don't have an SAP license, they can't access documents. Or if you have other you know, challenges, feel free to type that in the question box. So I'm just going to wait till we get a good amount of votes in, and then I will share the results so everyone can see you know, how everyone is feeling on the line currently. Just take a second or two to select your choices. Looks like I see the votes. The votes are coming in. All righty. I, I do see a clear winner. Um, just waiting for a few more votes. All right, so it looks like I got a good um, majority here, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results here. So as you can see, um, a lot of you are just struggling with too, just too much manual data entry, um, followed by people who don't have SAP, they can't access documents. Um, and then, of course, um, not being able to store external documents. It looks like a few people um, answered in the question box as well. So we'll get to those during the Q&A. So, um, all right, yeah, thanks everyone for your participation. And with that now, I'll hand it over to you, Matt. Thanks, Nicole. And hello, everyone. For those of you on the line that are not already using DocuWare, it is a leading content management solution that allows you to securely and intelligently capture, process, and store all your company's documents. So if we look at DocuWare by the numbers, we have a growing customer base in over 100 countries around the world. We're available in 24 languages, and we have just approached our 35th anniversary in business. This image gives a good visual of all the different areas that DocuWare can help. We can capture from all the different sources that you see on the left side of the screen. So email, PDFs, scanned documents, documents captured from a mobile device, and even electronic forms. When people think about document management, a lot of times you just talk about the search and retrieval aspect of it, but DocuWare can do a lot more from an automation perspective. So inside of that center circle are all the different components, features, processes that we can help automate. A couple of examples is uh, like intelligent indexing. We are able to, we just talked about the manual data entry piece of it. Intelligent indexing allows you to automatically capture a lot of that information that you might be typing in today. Rules-based routing is another one. So if you have certain unique business rules that you wanna to apply to your document processes, we're able to uh, automate and incorporate those with DocuWare. A good example could be from an invoice perspective, 
if you're processing invoices, you can set a certain threshold so that if invoices come in and meet or exceed that threshold, then the invoice can automatically route to a specific individual at your organization. Lastly, once we've captured and processed those documents, we have several tools to output your documents and data that you can see on the right side. So we can integrate with other systems, we can uh, send detailed reports, and we can also make your documents and data shareable so that the information is accessible for inside the company and out. So when we look at why this integration with SAP and Docuware is so important, it is helpful to first look at some of the challenges that we can address today. So first, are you wasting time finding documents? In a lot of cases with SAP, you could have the same document in a lot of different locations. Are you trying to have to figure out what document is where? Second, are you having to manually enter in data or do you have manual processes that don't really have a streamlined way of, of going through the system? Not only is this time consuming, but it could be error prone. And lastly, maybe most importantly, is the storage cost piece. Are you accumulating storage costs or will you as your needs expand? So how can we solve these with the Docuware integration? First, by having Docuware as your single point of all your data, we can eliminate the need for you to have to try and remember what document is where. Next, we can greatly reduce the processing time. In the accounts payable example, we can save 50% of the amount of time that you're spending on processing today. How would your productivity improve if you were given back 50% of your processing time. By using Docuware as a central repository, you're able to drastically reduce your storage costs. Not only is the storage cost in Docuware more cost effective, but it allows for an easier search and retrieval. So for some of you that might not have seen Docuware before, I'm gonna give you a quick overview demonstration and show you a couple different useful features. Okay. So this is Docuware. Docuware is a browser-based solution. It is available in both on-premise and cloud-based versions. And the biggest differentiator of Docuware is the user-friendliness of our product. It has been designed to be very intuitive, easy to navigate without any type of formal user training. So you'll see we have two screens in a single display. We have our left side, which is our document workspace, and our right side, which is our document viewer. The viewer is how you review documents that are coming into the system. We're gonna go back to our workspace and you can see we have several navigation tabs that we can complete various functions with. We're gonna start with document trays. So document trays are no more than a temporary holding area for documents that are coming into the system. And we have several different ways that we can bring documents into your tray. We can connect to a dedicated scanner, so if you're scanning documents in, we can have those images pull up directly into your document tray. You can also import right from your desktop and open in your tray that way. We have integrations with Outlook. So we have the ability right from Outlook just to simply right click the document or the attachment and store it in the appropriate document tray. Additionally, we can do a drag and drop. see them coming in. We can also monitor an email address. So if you're getting invoices, for example, to a specific email address, we can monitor that and have those attachments and the body of the email come into Docuware. We can monitor a folder. So if you have documents coming in to a specific network folder, we can monitor that and sweep them into your tray as well. So now that we have our documents in our tray, we're gonna take a look at an invoice from US Steel. I pull it up into my viewer, and we talked about some of the challenges that you mentioned on the survey and the manual data entry piece of it. So this next step is really where Docuware can apply a lot of the automation for your day-to-day -day process. I'm gonna go ahead and hit store, and you can see automatically all the information in these different data fields have populated in each field. And this is what we call intelligent indexing, 
which uses artificial intelligence to learn where all of the important pieces of information that I have selected on this document are located on this specific invoice. So as I go line by line, I can see that all this information is captured. It actually highlights where on the document that information is. We also have color-coded indicators next to each line. So since it's green, it's a system telling us that there's high confidence that the information is both complete and accurate. And let's say for whatever reason, the total was not captured. We can simply hover over the field and do what we call one-click indexing, and it'll populate that field for me. So you can see how quickly we were able to capture all this information without having to type in anything. You can only imagine, this is one invoice, you can only imagine the time savings if you're processing hundreds or even thousands of invoices a month. So we got all the information captured. I'm gonna go ahead and hit store, and that'll actually kick off the next step in the workflow. Now I'm gonna show you uh, some of the search capabilities. So search is one of the biggest benefits of having a content management system. You have different searches that are important to your specific user. Since I'm in accounting, I, I wanna be able to have an easy invoice search. So these are all the different fields that I can use to search to find my document quickly. So invoice number or PO number could be common ones, company name, but let's say uh, for some reason I can't remember who the company was or when the invoice came in. We have the ability with DocuWork to make all of your documents fully text searchable, which allows you to search any kind of keyword that could be included in that specific document. So I can't really remember the invoice. I'm just, I know we purchased a bolt on this invoice. I'm just gonna simply type in the word bolt and search and it's gonna show me the documents associated that have the word bolt in it. I double click, it'll even show me where on the document that word is located. So now that I've shown you how to bring documents into your tray, how to do intelligent indexing, and how to quickly and easily search within DocuWare, I'm going to pass it off to Bob to show us some use case examples. All right, thank you, Matt. Excellent. Well, really excited to be here today and uh, even more excited to show off the uh, DocuWare's capability here to integrate with SAP. And I, I really don't want to spend too much time really talking about the integration because uh, up next, we're going to get to actually showing um, an S4HANA uh, demo and show how these two systems really do complement each other uh, so well. But I, I do need to at least go through some of the, the use cases because like DocuWare, this integration is really just a tool set and we can configure it in any a number of ways to meet you know, whatever your specific business needs are. It's not just configured for the way that we are gonna show, show today. Um, so I, I separated these out into three different categories uh, to really go through the use cases that we see. The first one, uh, being documents that are, are generated out of SAP. So these are your purchase orders or sales orders, uh, acknowledgements, uh, bill weightings, those kind of documents. We are using DocuWare as the repository or the archive. And so not only can this be a more cost-effective way to store your documents, but as Matt showed, we can use DocuWare's you know, document management features to to do things like retention policies, there's more granular user permissions, you have the automated routing and approvals and, and so on. And you know, perhaps the biggest benefit is you don't lose any functionality uh, that you already have today, meaning I can still access those documents through the attachment lists in SAP, but I can now auth allow authorized users access to those same documents outside of SAP, meaning I don't need to have an SAP license to view those documents anymore. Uh, the second area, kind of the second category, are we bring documents into SAP or they need to be stored in SAP. And, and once again, we're going to use DocuWare as the repository. And in this case, really leverage um, those capture capabilities. So whether we're pulling from an email like Matt showed, or a scanner or a monitored folder, maybe even a mobile app for capturing, we want to bring those into DocuWare and have intelligent indexing go and pull as much data as we can off those documents to eliminate that manual data entry. And so once we do that, this allows us to 
to create those links uh, to the to the records or to the business objects in SAP by PO number or sales order number, whatever it might be. And we could actually link to multiple objects in SAP, but yet still have that one document sitting in DocuWare. And then even though you know we, we brought the documents into DocuWare, you can still access them the same way you're used to through the attachment list in SAP. And then obviously you still get access to them outside of SAP directly through DocuWare. The third area, and really kind of breaks down into to-do, is, is dealing with this master data or you know, the fact that SAP is your, your source of record. So we want to make sure that vendor information, GL codes, purchase order numbers, all that data is in sync between SAP and DocuWare. So if I'm in DocuWare, I can only select data that's relevant to SAP. If I have a known piece of information, a sales order number, I can then backfill information from SAP for better searching. Um, and then we're gonna go through an AP example today. And on that AP invoice, if we can bring that document in, use the OCR intelligent indexing to eliminate the manual data entry, it then allows us to do all these validations against purchase orders and pricing and whatnot, and then ultimately park or post that invoice into SAP without someone having to key it in. Um, like I said, this is one of the examples we're gonna go through today. Uh, we are gonna use S4 HANA uh, as the example for the demo, uh, but uh, please do keep in mind that we can uh, do the integration with, with many different flavors of SAP. Uh, so this is the end of the slide, so probably a good time to, to get into the fun stuff. So Mike, if uh, you're ready to go, uh, we'll go ahead and pass the presentation over to you. And uh, I guess, quite honestly, if you're not ready, it's coming anyway. So Mike, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Bob. Okay, so what we're gonna start with here is we're gonna be creating a purchase order in SAP um, like, you would, like you would normally do. And this purchase order has an output of creating a, uh, a PDF once it's created. And you, know, you might have a lot of different outputs in SAP. It's a very simple change to just to switch it from printing or emailing to then also archiving into uh, in the DocuWare. So this is a, a standard archive link interface um, that, we, that, we, that we use to, to, for the integration. So the documents just kind of go right across in the, into DocuWare. So what we have here is we're, we're doing a purchase order for our EV part uh, supplier. Um, we're gonna put some other reference information on this purchase order, and you'll see how this information also then flows over to, to DocuWare. So if, if, uh, if we have a customer that calls us and, and we're in DocuWare, we can just search by those type of, th th that criteria to pull up that document if we don't have the, the purchase order number. So we'll just fill in some of these fields here as references and then we'll create our purchase order. So we're gonna create three different lines on our purchase order. Some different quantities here. Okay. Okay, now that our, our, our purchase order is filled in, we're gonna save that, uh, that purchase order, which creates it, and then that document will be generated um, in the background and then sent over um, to, to SAP. We can see that our purchase order number was created, uh, 1314 here in the bottom bottom left. So now that if we go to DocuWare and do a search, we can see if I click on that on that uh, on that record, um, the purchase order document was created, and then also a lot of the index information from or the metadata about that purchase order from SAP was transferred over um, to DocuWare. So we can see the PO number, the date, vendor name, vendor vendor number from SAP, which company it goes to, and even some of those internal reference uh, numbers um, that we had um, that we searched for, um, that, we, that we added to that purchase order before. So not only is it in DocuWare where we, could, where we can search and find it there, but now in SAP, if we go look up that purchase order, and go to our attachment list, we can see that purchase order document. By double clicking on that, sorry, I was a little fast there. By double clicking on that uh, that item in the purchase, in the, in the attachment list, it automatically opened up the DocuWare viewer right to this, right to this document.
So here you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a very simple demo of how that works, but if you, if you have an output in SAP, um, it's very easy to have it then archive that document over um, into SAP. So not only just purchase order documents, but things like sales orders, deliveries, AR invoices, uh, when those get generated in SAP, they can automatically um, be here. And we've seen that save uh, quite a bit of either cost or time when people need to go retrieve um, those documents. Okay, so our next, our next thing that we're gonna focus on is documents that are uh, external to SAP and how those things, how those documents then get linked back to a transaction um, in, in SAP. So our first item is going to be a, an email we received um, from, from, a, from our supplier about the terms of this purchase order that they would like to, like they would like us to abide by. So using the connect to Outlook interface that Matt showed earlier, we, we brought that into this document tray of, of purchase order documentation. And here we can see when we go to store this document, that it automatically picked up the purchase order number uh, right here. If we and wanted that's to- that's that intelligent indexing piece. That's that OCR, that's the learning piece for intelligent indexing. Yep. And here you can see what we did is that since that data came over from SAP, we could even see things like, okay, what is the external PO number? So if we just had that, we could we could store by that by that number as well, and then the system would automatically link it up. So here, this is showing more of a manual process of doing it, but we can do all these linking uh, of documents um, automatically behind the scenes if there is one of those key pieces of information on it. So when we store this document, we're only storing it by the purchase order number. Store that there. We can do our search. There it goes. So what it did, it went out to SAP and grabbed that information related to that uh, related to that purchase order. So we can see the PO number, so the vendor name, vendor number, company code, and all those reference numbers have been put on this uh, terms document. So now if we go back over to SAP, So behind the scenes, what's going to happen now is that, that that document, that email is now going to be linked to this purchase order. So it doesn't matter which system I'm in. If I'm in that purchase order and I want to see some of that related information, um, it would be uh, on this attachment list. Here we go. So we have both the purchase order and that email. Clicking on that email, again, pulls up DocuWare. And shows uh, that email that we, that we that we attached. So one thing nice here we're using the DocuWare viewer. So this is an email, and with you know with SAP, it's not good at displaying all the different type of documents we might want to link um, to a um, to a record in SAP. So with the, the the with the benefit of the DocuWare viewer, it can show you know hundreds of different file formats very easily in a browser. You know the user doesn't have to have all these different softwares loaded up for them to view these documents. Um, it easily displays them in, and renders them in the DocuWare viewer. And Mike, I just want to just pause for a second there. I mean, I, I didn't see you type anything when you stored this document. So for, for those that might be, you know, storing these correspondence or, you know, this, this email that's referenced to, to a purchase order in this case, or to a sales order, it's it's still you know, that capture that that capture piece with DocuWare where you can have that one key piece of information. You can you can teach it. You can use the intelligent indexing and then have that automatically linked. Versus, you know, if you have to save the email or save the attachment, go into SAP, find the record type, go to the attachments. You know, all those different steps you go through. You know, with the integration here, you can you can utilize those capture tools with DocuWare and then with the integration do that linking for you automatically. Yep. 
I mean, we, we've also used it for, let's say you get a bunch of EDI invoices um, that are automatically executed in your SAP system, but then the vendor then sends those, uh, the, the, you know, the hard copies or the, you know, electro electro electronic copies of those uh, PDFs of those invoices to you at a later date. And we can read those all in, link them all back to the invoice behind the scenes and, and backfill the index data. So that way, if someone's ever looking up that EDI invoice in SAP and they actually want to see the human readable format document of that, Again, just go to the attachment list. We linked it automatically uh, based on those keywords, those key fields that we, we found behind the scenes with no work um, by the end user um, to show that document. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities there. Excellent. Awesome. Um, so uh, another way of linking uh, external documents is called barcoding. This is a SAP function where we, we do the, the linking kind of happens more on the SAP side. Um, and the, the scenario we're gonna have here today is when we're receiving goods, we have that uh, goods receipt or receiver where we're, we're marking down, okay, we got this item and we got five of these and 10 of those. And then we, we're gonna put that, that document, um, we're gonna execute that document in SAP by doing, doing a goods receipt there. And you know, how do we link that goods receipt document to that transaction? So the way we're gonna do it here today is we're going to we're going to get those goods in on the floor. We're going to scan that um, that uh, that packing slip goods receipt into DocuWare, and it, in DocuWare we have a list that we work off of where we validate the goods and then um, do the transaction in SAP at the same time. So your organization might do it differently, um, and we can talk about all those different ways. But uh, this this method can support a, a variety of, of processes of how you how you do that um, of receiving goods you know who, who's who's the one who's entering who's the one who's signing things in um, this this can handle all those different scenarios so what we have here is a list in DocuWare on our dashboard here of, of packing slips that we need to then enter into um, SAP so these are you know, we need to do a goods receipt here so we're going to scan uh, scan one in here kind of simulate that in the back in the back end so we're going to bring a bring that document in. So that document comes in and then it'll show um, up automatically on our list um, for processing. And there it is. So we can see our document. We would then go and review what we what what has been received um, for that um, for that purchase order. So I'm just going to put my initials. Yep. So the first line we have we received the entire line um, for that first item. Um, for the second item we we really received half a shipment, and then for the last one we received zero. So we're just initialing that. Yep, that's what we got, and we're going to sign and date that on our document. And next we're going to um, now enter this into uh, SAP. So we want to copy this barcode value because this is what we're going, this is how we're going to link this document into, into SAP uh, when we do that transaction. Okay, so here's the screen in, in SAP where we receive goods. We have our purchase order number. Let's go full screen here. So for the first uh, item, we received all 10 in. Second item, we only received four. And then the last item, we received zero. So with the barcoding process, now when I post this transaction, it is then going to pop up and say, okay, well, which document in DocuWare did you use um, for this um, for this transaction? So what I'm going to do here is just so you can kind of see it. So once we post this, this will auto this this uh, pending uh, packing slip here will automatically come off the list. So I'll hit post. SAP is going to come up and say, okay, what's what's the value you use? So here's that barcode value that we used that, that was on that document. I'm going to hit OK here. And then you can see how that document just, just came off the list automatically. 
So now, if we want to display that document, let's go here. I want to display the document we just created. Okay, so here's that uh, that re that goods receipt we just did in SAP, and it has its own attachment list. If you click on that there, we can see our goods receipt. So if anybody else came into this 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 uh, this receiving document, they could they would see this here that they wanted to validate. You know what was entered versus what was on the document. They could come here and just click on that document on that link. It would show them the document. And then also show them, you know, the different annotations. Okay, who signed off on this, and wh and when did they do it? And here's where we talked about how the same document can be linked to multiple um, records in SAP. So not only did we we link this to the the receiving document, but we can also link this to the purchase order. So I'm gonna go back to my purchase order. Go back to my attachment list. And we see all three items now. The purchase order, the email with their terms, and the goods receipt. Again, clicking on that opens up that same document. Now, if I go back to DocuWare and do a search, you can see that that packing list came in and all the information uh, backfilled into it. Okay. Anything you want to add, Bob, before we move over to uh the best part of the show no i'm just excited to get to the good stuff no i did a nice job showing everything i mean i think it's a great explanation for the way we can link to multiple objects um i just keep coming back to the ease of getting these documents in and linked to wherever you need them in in sap and every company is a little bit different so if you need a document linked to a specific transaction uh, we just need to work with you on where you need that to be. So let's put it let's put it in a place that allows you to get access to that information as quickly as possible, so you don't have to go hunt and peck and find it. And then once again, because it's in DocuWare, you don't have to be an SAP to find this. You can give access to these documents to anybody uh, with just a DocuWare license uh, without needing that SAP license. Okay, let me just write that down. So your favorite part is paying bills. So I'm just going to write that. Down. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And and for those those following along, you probably guessed that, you know, we're going to be going through the AP side. We're going to do some validation against what was received in our goods receipt to make sure it matches the PO, which I'm sure is a process that most people on here are very familiar with. So get your popcorn. I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so now we have a invo uh, tray for our PO invoices. Um, I, again, brought that in through uh, our, the drag and drop method for this one. And then when we go to store this document, we can see, similar to Matt's example, where it pulls all that information off the document. So if I hover over a piece of information, you can see you know, where it came from. But there, it also pulled information that's not on the document. So it learned that this, document goes to this vendor number in SAP. So that, that's another a really key advantage where we can, it, it, as, as the intelligence indexing learns, it learns, okay, this one goes to that name and this uh, vendor number um, in SAP. So th this list comes right from SAP. So when we store this document, uh, this document's gonna then, you know, make sure there's no other, uh, uh, it's gonna do a duplicate check, but then go through and then go to SAP and then find the, all the PO line items um, for this purchase order. So I'm gonna hit store here and we'll talk about that here in just a second here. So I'm gonna hit store. 
And then I'm going to show you our, our dashboard so we can kind of explain um, the process of how it kind of works its way down um, down down the dashboard here. So it comes in, it does a few does a few checks for to make sure it's you know, not a duplicate. And right now it's getting our open PO line item. So it's going out to that purchase order, seeing uh, all the different lines on the purchase order, what has been received, what has already been invoiced, and then does a calculation to see, okay, does the invoice amount match um, the open PO amount um, on the purchase order? And then brings that information to you. Um, so then you can decide, uh, do we do we pay this invoice? Do we have to negotiate? Is there, you know, what, what do we do with it? Um, you know, if, if you get comfortable with the system, you can have it automatically post um, if you'd like and go straight through. Um, but, uh, you know, as you learn, uh, we can adapt this to, um, to your specific needs. So it gets those open purchase order items and then it kind of drops it into uh, our review tab here. Um, you can also see we have other things for expense invoices or so non-PO uh, line items. So we do, we do have a demo for that as well, but we're not showing that here um, where it goes out for approval. Um, you can then see you know, who, who has it and when they have it. Um, you know, if it's been rejected, why, and things like that. But right now we're focusing on our purchase order invoice process. So it just moved from our get, um, from our doing our calculation and it went into our AP review step here. So I'm gonna click on my task. So now I have a workflow task. So this is something we haven't really seen before yet. So we have one item in our task list and it kind of tells us we double click on that. It shows us the document uh, in the right. And it shows us um, our, our, our workflow task here um, on the left. So you can see uh, when you double click on it, it gives us, gives us this form um, and gives us a little bit of information about uh, the invoice. There's other decisions we can make here on the left, whether we want to, you know, do the do the calculation for the uh, the PO items again. Let's say we just received something in the invoice came in came in before we did the receive, and we could go and refresh um, those those results. If we wanted to send it to purchasing um, with a comment, um, we could say, hey, there's you know, can you check the pricing on this one or what happened to line three? We could we could send that over to them. They could do they could they would own that invoice and they could send it back to us, and we could reassign it to a different. Um, different AP specialists, if we didn't want it, we could reject it. Um, so we have a whole bunch of different options that we can customize um, to, your, to your needs. But, we're, but for today, we're gonna focus on our send to SAP option. So here we, we, we can see that the, the amounts are different and it's because of this freight charge that we have here um, on the right. So again, we can scroll down, we can see our, we can see our open PO line items right here. So we are, our different line one and line two. Uh, right now we have a quantity of 10 and a quantity of four open. We can also look and see all, all purchase order line items. So that we can see the, what's, what's the complete history of, of that purchase order uh, and one quick uh, view here right in DocuWare. So we don't need to go flip it back and forth between our different screens, we can get a quick glimpse of what's going on with the purchase order. So here you can see all three line items. We can see, yep, we, our quantity was eight, but we only received four. And then that, that third line item, we can see that we had four, but we didn't receive any. And then for all of these, we, didn't in, we haven't invoiced anything yet. We also allow, if you wanted to put that $80 in a GL account, so that GL account information would come from SAP. Um, all the different accounts would be loaded there to pick from um, if needed. Also in DocuWare, similar to that attachment list that we've seen in SAP, um, we have a related tab here where we can then say, okay, show me all the, uh, the documents related to this purchase order. So I can go back and see the original purchase order document show me the goods receipt, show me the terms. So if I click on that, it goes and shows me all the documents that share that purchase order number. Here we can see the purchase order, the terms, the packing list, and here's the invoice that we're working on today. So you could imagine if, there, if this was an invoice that had multiple receiving, multiple invoicing, we could see that whole history um, right here. Awesome. Okay, 
So in order for this to balance, uh, we're gonna take this $80. Oops, let's click on the document here. And using that one click indexing that uh, Matt kind of referred to before, we're gonna put that $80 into our unplanned delivery cost. If I just click on that value, it's gonna fill it in there um, for me, that $80. So now um, our, our transaction is gonna balance and we can post it to SAP. Go ahead, post, and then hit confirm. So now it's gonna remove out of that AP review step and then put it into our queue for posting over um, to, to SAP. And Mike, with, that, with those lists you have up there, these are the ones that I would say we most commonly use as part of this process, but you know, depending on your specific needs, you know, this, this dashboard, this list of kind of real time what's going on can be updated, changed, um, you know, created to whatever your specific need is. But it's nice that you can see it kind of walk through. You see the red versus the yellow, so you know which ones are being moved versus which ones are sitting out there waiting for some action uh, to be taken on. Yep. And it's always fun going through the process. Oh, see, perfect timing. Yeah. Going through the process. Better. Yeah, on, on the webinar when it goes through, and in a second seems like an hour. So fantastic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So again, that, that invoice posted over. Um, we have the SAP posting key if we wanted to look up that document. So we'll, we'll do that now. Okay, so here's that invoice that we posted with the different line items of our quantities, 10 and four. Payment amount is 1,400. In our details here, we can see that $80 of that unplanned delivery cost that we mapped over. And then if we go to that attachment list, we can see our invoice. Again, double clicking on that. Shows the invoice in DocuWare. But then also, again, if we go back to our attachment list for that purchase order, we see all four documents, all linked to that, that, to that PO. So it doesn't matter which transaction we're in, um, we can get to the documents um, that, we, that we want to see. Okay. I think that's that's what we have for today. I think it, just to recap a little bit of that last piece there, I think that's that's why I like the invoice process and showing it is you very easily get those three different, four different, excuse me, four different documents, you know, related to that one object. And if you think about your processes today, they I mean they came in via email, they were generated out of out of SAP, they came in through the ship. There's multiple ways you're getting these documents and you can use the one tool set to bring all those into one storage location. There's one copy of that image that allows you to create those references uh, within SAP. So people don't need to go once again and search through multiple areas to find the documents they're looking for, present it to them in one screen in one place uh, to save them that time. I think before I hand it back over to over to Matt, I do want to say the demo today was run live. So big shout out, Mike, for for getting through things in you know demos. Once again, seconds seem like minutes, but this was run directly from a DocuWare cloud environment in real time with a live SAP environment. So from a performance standpoint, um, it it's the real deal, which I think is fantastic. And once again, uh, nice work, Mike. Thanks, well, Matt. Hand it back to you. Thanks, Bob and Mike. It's extremely helpful to see that integration in action.
So while AP is a great example to show for this integration, just keep in mind that there's a lot of different departments and processes that we can help automate outside of just accounts payable. So we've included some different uh, departments and areas on the screen that we think we can really provide some additional value. HR is a great example. Uh, employee onboarding has typically been a pretty manual process. With Docker, we're able to automate with email notifications, electronic forms, escalations. Uh, logistics is another one. Historically, has been a paper intensive department. With Docker, where we can link documents and data together, as well as digitize that workflow to have it electronic. All right. Great. So thanks again um, to Matt, Bob, and Mike for those great insights and demos. And we're going to wrap up now, but I do have one more poll question for everyone. So let me just launch that now. You should, you should see it on your screen. Uh, we just want to get a feel of what you saw today. Again, um, you saw a quick interface overview of DocuWare and um, AP examples of the SAP and Docker integration. So let us know, did you, did you get the value of how the integration can solve your challenges, at least like a good starting point? Um, and then I'll show you, we do have some ways for you to get in touch with your Docker partner, um, just so you can take, take the next steps there. So just take a, a moment here to select. You can also select more than one option. All right, I see votes coming in. Just wait a little bit more and then I'll share the results. I think you'll like what you see. All right. It's coming in. All right, I got a good amount. I'm going to close it now and then I will share the results. <clears throat> so by landslide, it looks like for those of the, uh, you that participate in the poll, the answer is an outstanding yes. You definitely got the value of the integration today. So again, big thanks to Bob and Mike for that and also Matt for the Docker interface overview. And a few of you at this time said that you would like a personalized demo. So that's great. All right, um, Matt, I think you just have one more uh, takeaway slide there. Yep. Yeah, so just to recap, here are some of the key takeaways for this integration. And each benefit listed is gonna allow you really to maximize the investment that you've already made in SAP or your ERP system. And with Docware, we can now optimize the way you process documents. I wanna say thank you a lot for all of your time today. And I'll let Nicole, take us away. All right. Yes, let's open it up for Q&A now. Looks like we have um, 10 minutes. We did have an hour allocated, so thank you for those on the line. Go ahead and type in your questions. I see some have come in. We'll get to them. Uh, we encourage you, though, to take the next step. Let's continue the conversation. Um, contact your partner now if you would have received a webinar invitation from them. So go ahead and contact them to get started. Uh, request a demo from us at docker.com slash demo or email us anytime at contact.us at docker.com and we'll put you in touch with the right people.